everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings Card Game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. <laughs> and Ted Ted Bannock can't join us today because he we were recording this during work hours. So why the heck would we ever record something during work hours? Well, let me answer that question in a minute. Because before we <laughs> before we get to that, I just want to make sure that I thank all the patrons of the show. Just um, every patron out there, you guys do awesome work for the show, and it's because of you that we can bring you awesome content like we have during um, during couples February. And so, so now Grant, we get to answer the question: Why are we recording this during the U.S. workday? Well, why don't you go ahead and answer that one? <laughs> to end our couples February, we decided we reached out to both um, Caleb and Co. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we, we, we decided to reach out to Matt Newman and Caleb Grace, who after um, Nate French took over uh, or uh, gave up designing the game, really took over the reins of the game. And they were so gracious, as always, to accept an invitation to the uh, to come on the show and I really was kind of a pain in the butt about it so Matt and Caleb <laughs> uh, I really appreciate taking time to really wrap up this couple's February probably the most prominent couple in the game right here right before our, our eyes so, um, we do look really good together yeah we're the power couple yeah. Yeah. Well, well you are I mean really because what you say kind of goes for the whole community right and, and I yeah, I feel like our our story, really, it's it's kind of on par with like Aragorn and Arwen. Yeah, Baron yeah. Baron and Luthien. Yeah, yeah. This unrequited love story. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this. I'll, I, there, I have a couple other things before we totally get into it, but uh, this is Couples <laughs> February, and you know we've been highlighting love stories and and how couples got together, you know, throughout the game, whether it's in the cards or whether it's part of the part of the community or even outside the community in LOTR, but. So, how did you guys meet? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I think we met uh, during my job interview. No, we met before that. Oh, yeah, well, we I met, can't believe we you met forgot the time. first time. Oh, we my met. God. No, I'm sorry. How are you? Uh, we it was a magical time. day and you forgot. <laughs> Yeah, it was with someone else. But it was the only <laughs> it was, uh, during the uh, Battle of Lake Town, yeah. uh, Gen Con event, Gen and um, yeah, and uh, I I signed up to be a playtester, mm -hmm. and um, and then I started playtesting for uh, for the um, against the Shadow Cycle, mm -hmm. and then I had the job interview here, and and, uh, and I, I knew it was something more. <laughs> because you used to sign all of your playtest emails like love Matt. <laughs> <Did> I, <laughs> oh yeah. And then, um, and then when I moved here, you, you and uh, Lucas were the people who helped me move in. So yeah. that was really nice of you. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Ah, so you guys have awesome. a, a long and sordid past, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it actually is kind of fun to, to realize, like we have been coworkers and friends now for like, Seven, seven, almost seven years. Yeah, yeah. Like that's no short amount of time. Yeah, but it's got. Like if you go to college yeah. and you're hanging out with friends from college, you get to know those guys for four years, and then a lot of those friends you just kind of part ways with, not because of anything, but so, right, right. you know. So to have somebody in your life for seven years, guys, you guys are typically common law married, right? I don't know what the laws are in Minnesota, but <laughs> you know. Um, uh, but that's that's. A lot of them are already real law married. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> that's that's hysterical. So Caleb, you've been on the show before, so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I just want to talk to Matt just r real quickly. So so Matt, you haven't been on the podcast before, so I want to really thank you so much for taking time out of your day. And it's been a while, probably since you've looked at some uh, some LOTR cards really really closely. But um, what were some of the cycles or what are some of the things that you really had um your hand in mostly you know like because all the game is designed now you guys probably haven't been designing lotr stuff for a year now so you know like <laughs> so i know that it's been a while so where were where were you most active 
in, in the design process? Um, I, I, when I first joined, I was working mostly on nightmare scenarios, nightmare decks. So a lot of the early nightmare decks are my designs. Um, and then I kind of transitioned into okay. helping with the Angmar cycle um, after uh, the Lost Realm. So you did the Lost Realm box. You did, uh, you did a couple scenarios of the... That's true. I did I did Trouble in Tharbad. And, and uh, um, what was the other one? The Three Trials. The Three Trials. Yeah, was the one that oh, I loved the Three Trials. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was great. But um, fun bit about that one was uh, that's what Christian was really involved. Yeah, and yeah. Writing the stories. So it used to be like you would kind of come up with like what would be some fun quest and then write a story to connect them. And instead, Christian wrote the story, so it was like, come, come up with quests around it. And I was yeah. looking at the story, but every time I got hired, and it was this, the, the, the three trials was like, it just didn't resonate with me at all. I was like, well, how do you make a quest out of this story that mm -hmm. he has written? And I basically like acted like I was doing something nice for Yeah, you were like, like, hey, man, you hey, can't I would, I would like to design a, a full-on scenario instead of just a nightmare one. And you're like, I'd love to. Yeah, that like, sounds great. Here, take this one that I don't want to touch with a stick. And like, <laughs> And they like the best one in the cycle. Like, it's it's cool. well. uh, I like that one a lot. You um, worked your ass off. You know, I yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, and that's the one with the oh three goodness, clans, yeah. right? The wolf clan, um, the boar clan, and the raven clan. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yep. So, yeah, you did a couple there, but then you're right. Like, yeah, the and then uh, was... yeah, the Angmar cycle, because that's when you started transitioning really into saga mm -hmm. expansions, like hardcore into saga, yeah. and then um, and then the Grey Havens and Dream Chaser. Um, was also that was like my I, I would say okay. probably like my big contribution to the game or those that whole like cycle. Those your swan song. Yeah, yeah, that's actually pretty fitting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember talking about that. Yeah. Like, like, oh, I'm going to be working on Arkham after this. So yeah. It's, it's bleeding out. <laughs> and, uh, nothing was behind. Say, like, you're the lead designer, Matt, on Arkham Horror, right? Kind of the sister. I don't know the sister LCG to mm -hmm. uh, to to Lord of the Rings, right? More like the, the pipe smoking older, like, <laughs> and then the I saw, and then I saw the entity which I cannot <laughs> describe here. <laughs> it was, uh, I, well, it's supposed to be like a. Anyway, go on. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. I could tell. This is just. I should just. I should just say a couple of words and let you guys talk, and that's entertainment enough here. This is great. Um, but. I did. I did want to no. ask a couple of questions because Caleb, Caleb with the contracts, and I have a bone to pick with you, Caleb, about contracts in a minute. But, um, but um, right. has there been anything that you have done in Arkham that has made its way into Lord of the Rings by you? Have you found inspiration in both of those universes or platforms to kind of have some some inspiration across? And it can be loosely related, you know. Like I don't. A lot of the player card stuff doesn't really translate. Uh, in, in those two games, I guess. Uh, well, okay. This is the other way around. Yeah, because like uh, a lot of stuff went from Lord of the Rings. There is some stuff that, Arkham. yeah. For example, um, Patrice in uh, Arkham is basically okay. uh, Aristor from Lord of the Rings. Um, there's also uh, a lot of I make a lot of in references for people who played Lord of the Rings. So there's like Unexpected Courage is a card in Arkham. It does something different, of course, but it's it's a card. It was a test of will with almost the same flavor text, <laughs> which I really like. Almost the same artwork, um, which is really cool. So I make a lot of little uh, kind of references. And last time I actually talked to you, it was at Con of the Rings, and you said um, that you're five. You're having five year art. But it's not it's not in Lord of the Rings, and you said it hasn't been released yet. Um, <laughs> is there an update on your five year art yet? Yep, it, some people have seen it uh, in the wild. It's so okay. it's a kind of a special thing that I did with it. It's not going to be in like a product per se. But if you were at Arkham Knights in uh, 2019, 2020, 2019, 2020s coming up, um, <laughs> that'd be exciting. Right? You yeah, were already there in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you were at Arkham Knights in 2019, you might have already seen it because you played oh, any special okay. secret scenario. So, so at least yeah. there is some inspo crossing paths. Uh, is Test of Will in your game like really cheap and really kills the design space? Actually, for one of the things we early on, we were like, if we're going to do uh, you know treachery cancellation, uh, we we want to make it so that there's a lot of different ones that all work differently. Um, so Test of Will is. A treachery canceling card in Arkham, but it uh, it exiles itself, meaning it's out of your deck once you've used it. You have to like repurchase it with experience points to get it back. That's really that's really cool. So you guys you guys 
probably, and Caleb, you can join in the conversation now that I've had my discussion with Matt. Is is it fair to say that you guys really worked uh, hand in hand, so to speak, with um, developing some of the LOTR content? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It was interesting, you know, like you said, like he kind of took charge on the on the cycle development for a while while I was focused on Saga. And it, it was almost like parallel play, like when you're kids and like you're both building Legos at the same time. <laughs> And you're like, look what I'm building. Oh, that's cool. I'm building this. And then you inspire each other. Like, I'm going to add a window to mine. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, mine's going to have three wings. Right. But yeah. then, you know, eventually you end up fighting over the same Lego piece. Like, no, I need that one. Use that one. Yeah, that's like, a really good analogy. That's what I did. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what it is. No, it was great. Like, I I, uh, I miss working, like, in tandem. That was a lot of fun. Like, So whenever Matt, like, is interested in helping with Marvel and his schedule allows, I'm, like, really excited to have him because that's – I don't know. Like we did a play test recently. It's been a long time since we play tested together. Yeah. And I forgot like that was almost the best part of working on the game line together was play testing because me and Matt have like similar humor. <laughs> yeah. Like we're both like singing when we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot of inside just, jokes. Just random stuff. Like yeah. uh, so, so many things like the uh, I can't even think of right now. We have to be playing and they have to come up for me to yeah remember for me to do that. You know, just like all the. The, the Harry Potter reference. I'm trying to remember what they were. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> That's but, so yeah. sad that I can't remember that right <laughs> yeah. now. I mean, you can't talk about your inside jokes that are going on. <laughs> no, but... Um, Caleb, I do have a question for you with the new, uh, the newfound contracts. And... The new contracts. Damn, new contracts. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Lord of the Rings, you can just do whatever you want. You don't have to sign no contract. <laughs> um, but I think Ted and I, if Ted were here, he's working, so he's kind of losering it up. But I think I didn't realize that the contract has the potential to whiff. Like if you if you do stuff, I think if I'm reading it correctly. So I just wanted to like on the um, I've been playing the the Gray Wanderer contract, which says pull out a one cost. Mm -hmm attachment from your deck sure but i realized that i right. am i drawing my hand before that happens and then doing the mulligan and doing all of that and then looking for the the one card like is that what i'm doing i need a pair of glasses so i can push them up and be like mm, actually <laughs> you know if you just read the rules <laughs> uh, yeah so it's, it's it's actually it's in the uh, you know the setup for the game step six sure. or sorry step five is to dry your hand and the, and the okay. follow setup instructions is step seven so that yeah you would have your opening hand before you're resolving any setup instructions there was, there was one burden uh, Gandalf, Gandalf delay, right? Gandalf's yeah. delay was basically okay. worded incorrectly. Yeah, okay. it was like set up. You draw one less right. card, and technically, yeah. you should not be doing that in the setup. Yeah, it's um, like too late by then. And I think ultimately, we never issued an errata for that because everyone just kind of intuitively knew what that meant, how to resolve it. But it does, yeah, it, you know, when you start to compare and contrast setup effects, it does create confusion. Um, yeah, that was that was kind of a pain. Like I remember that coming up. It was one of those things where like never came up during playtesting. That was like one of the first cards that had yeah. set up. Yeah, it, right? it was yeah, one of them. It never so. came up in card council. It wasn't until like far later. Yeah. That someone was like, Haven't you already drawn your <laughs> hand at this point? Or like, yeah. <laughs> you mean, yeah. You mean, uh, <laughs> we do that. Mm. Well, this kind of so, I mean, go back in time, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's very simple. So I mean, so I guess the the one ring also does the same thing, right? If you have that one card that you're pulling out, the one master card you're pulling out, you're doing it out. So I mean, in theory, it could whiff. And you can always uh, you can always put an extra copy, yeah, of that card that you want. Like so, for example, if you're trying to pull Strider with the uh, Great Wanderer, just put two in your deck, or uh, you can mulligan. You, there's always a chance you have really bad luck and you mulligan into both copies. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> or if you pull an opening hand and it doesn't have it, maybe don't mulligan. Yeah, I mean, then again, it's like, if you mulligan and you, and you have it, well, you're still going to get it. You can also get another one-cost attachment with that, too. You're like, you're not... <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you've one. got multiple yeah. one-cost attachments in your deck, then that's yeah, it's really fine. not a problem. Yeah. So that means that if I'm pulling a one-cost attachment out for, 
the Grey Wanderer, the guarded keyword still goes off, right? Like, because the deck is still there. Yeah, yeah, I can't get around that. The only one that gets around that is the is the Burglar's yeah. Turn yeah. contract, right? Like that's. You're talking about to get around the guarded keyword? Yeah. Yeah, Burglar's Turn was designed to be the only way that you could get a guarded uh, attachment in play without resolving the keyword. Yeah. Because I guess I guess that from a design point of view, you want to make sure that the player cards have a chance to whiff at some point. There's got to be some reason to like some cost benefit analysis to have going on there, right? Probably did that on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I think it's, more, it's such a low percentage chance that I don't think it uh, is going to happen very often. Yeah, and, and if you need to put more one right. cost attachments in your deck to cancel right. it out, leave the brooch. Yep. Yeah. I think, I think sometimes, sometimes too, it's just a consideration of like, well, we could find a way to write this card to eliminate that possibility, sure. but it just adds more language, more words. And ultimately, when you're trying to design a like that's right. this complicated to begin with, you're not trying to overburden it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and that said, too, it's a co-op game. I, I'm not going to come to your house and slap that card out of your hand and you right. yeah. put it in your hand well, at the start of the game yeah. and skip the yeah. stretch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you look you yeah. you look like no, that no. kind of guy. Okay, well that's and that's good. And, and the only other thing that I'll say about contracts, and I'm not asking for any feedback, is that the latest contract that was spoiled, the Messenger of the King. Thank you so much because now I have to go record every freaking episode that I ever did on <laughs> on any unique ally ever. <laughs> yeah. Added a hundred something uh, heroes to the game. That was really right. the inspiration, right? It was like, I don't think they appreciate how good Ally Halder is. What if we made him a hero? Right. Take that card. <laughs> right. A quick question on that. Um, the Messenger of the King, if you use Aragorn, does it set back to the threat of the normal two heroes, or does it go back to the threat of all three of them? Just your. I, oh, I'm, that's a good question. No, I, I, so I have to pull the card up. Because I haven't got the language memorized, but I'm pretty sure it says. I think like, it says raise your threat. No, by, I think it says increase your starting, starting threat. threat. If it says starting threat, then I'm, I'm, do you guys have it in front of you? I can look uh, it up. I'm amateur podcast. You're not even ready when you're asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can pull it up on my phone right here. Yeah, he's uh, looking it up because it does make a difference. Uh, if if it says. If it says increase your starting threat, right. then when you reset to your starting threat, it will be the increased amount. If it simply says raise your threat, article. then that's and, and different. The last time you came on the show, just you, Caleb, you said the last contract is the one that you're most excited for, right? Like that's, And I'm not asking you to give me any information about it other than you're just really excited about that last contract, right? Yeah, I think it was just when, when I was developing, I think it was the deck that I had the most fun playing. Um, the truth is, it's like trying to pick your favorite child. Like, you really shouldn't. Like, they're all really awesome. For your starting threat, yeah. So the Aragorn yeah. will reset it to your revised I thought start. we did that, but then again, you know, I prefaced this whole show my memory being bad. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are times that I thought that I wrote a card a certain way, and then mm -hmm. we didn't print it that way. <laughs> um, but the couple's February, yeah. and we have the most magnanimous couple right there with us. So, um, and however much we could try to talk about uh these contracts forever and ever let's get it you guys want to talk about some cards i'm sure so um what cards are we going to talk about in this well, i'm gonna let matt tell you because it was, yeah, it was his was idea great. That was pretty cool. oh well I, I, thought it, I thought it'd be a good idea to pick a couple uh yeah that's great cards. and not just a not just two cards but two cards that are a couple if mm -hmm. you can catch them here. okay um and uh we chose um aomer and lethereal because they do get hitched in the story. Giddy up. Um, and uh, yeah, they, and they, there are two cards that work really well together. Mm -hmm. So Tactics Aomer tactics forms the immediate combo of mm -hmm. Lethereal puts an ally into play for questing. They go away at the end of the quest right. phase, and then Aomer gets powered up, and yeah. he hits really hard during the combat phase. But uh, Leadership Aomer could also work fine with Lethereal. This means you're going to be questing really well. Yeah, I just think it's the deck yeah. you're trying to build. Right. Right. Yeah, it's, it depends on kind of what allies you want to put in your deck, too. I do like a Spirit Tactics deck, though. I find they complement each other pretty well. Yeah. It's always fun to play. And you can round that out really well with uh, Tactics Imrahil. Mm -hmm. You can also throw an ally into play real quick. 
So let's get into the little bit of the nitty gritty, uh, because you guys are not working from no. a computer. Grant, do you have Lothereal up? Um, she is an eight cost, three willpower, one attack, one defense, three hit points, spirit hero, with the Gondor and Noble trait, and with the text, if Aoma is in play, Lothereal gains the Rohan trait, in response, after the Lethereal commits to a quest, choose an ally in your hand. If that ally shares a trait with her, put that ally into play, exhausted and commit to the quest. At the end of the phase, if that ally is still in play, shuffle it into your deck. Um, but Tactics Amor is a 10 threat cost uh, tactics hero with 1 willpower, 3 attack, 2 defense, and 4 hit points. He's Rohan Noble Warrior, and he's got a response. After a character leaves play, such as the one that Lothereal just brought into play um, during the quest phase, Amor gets plus two until the end of the round. So that's, I mean, that's key. The difference between a phase in the game and a round in the game is super key. And I'm glad that this is per round because um, you don't hardly ever attack in the in the quest phase unless you got some some reason to do that. Right. Uh, yeah. He was designed a long time ago. Yeah, he, he was, was in the uh, Isengard, Isengard right? Yeah, yeah, voice of Isengard. Yeah, so at the time, the Rohan deck was all about right. the uh, like escort from Aedarus mm -hmm. for quest power, but goes away. Yeah. So yeah, he was definitely built to combo with Rohan questers. Yeah. Who designed this version of Ammer? Uh, that was you. Yeah. Yeah, voice of Isengard. Yeah, I mean that's that's one of those designs that practically writes itself, though. Yeah, for it's, sure. It's yeah. like, what is Aomer best known for in the books? Like just whooping all kinds of ass, yeah. you know? It's just getting, getting, yeah, getting no. mad when yeah. His... Oh, sorry, family show. <laughs> oh, kicking all kinds of butt and showing those bad guys what's up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So and then and then Rohan at the time, and and still today is is about allies entering and leaving play. Mm -hmm. So. Lovely. Yeah. Sacrificing themselves valiantly Sacri yeah, for, the, yeah. for the greater good. For the greater good. <laughs> it's one of our it's jokes. more than just them coming in and out of play because it's like they're coming in and out from the discard pile more than they are from your hand. Like, you know, you have gambling and, you know, Hama who can not hero Hama, but ally. Right, yeah. You know, like it's all about the discard thing. It's not that you're not talking about the Sylvan elves that come in and out of play that way. Um, so. Give us your breakdown, guys. What's uh, what about these uh, cards? Yeah. Where obviously that came from the low hanging fruit is that came from the lore of the game that these guys eventually got married. But you know how, what what was the what was the overall inspo for this sort of card interaction here? What was the initiation for Lothariel? I, so, I think yeah, Lothariel was honestly like we want another female. Yeah, hero, we, we wanted to get more of, diversity into. We're the... kind of running low, <laughs> and then did you bring up? I think, or, I, I, think maybe I, did. I saw it in the appendix. I'm not sure. Know. I'm not sure how it started. But Somehow her name we, came up, yeah, her name and it was up. like, oh, that's perfect. We wanted. Uh, you know what? I think it was. I think it was. Um, uh, our friend uh, Britty mentioned that Lutheriel was like one of her favorite. Characters oh my gosh, that's from right. Deep lore. Yeah, another coworker in yeah. a different department was like, oh, I love Lutheriel. And I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lutheriel. Yeah, like, we should totally make yeah, her into sure. a hero and yeah. then give her some, you know, kind of synergy with. With with Aomer, Aomer, yeah. Rohan, and, and I like that her ability kind of mirrors Imrahil's ability to like he can put allies in the play from his hand, but only if they share right. a trait yeah. with him. So it's kind of uh, he, he, she kind of like inherited his ability almost. But <laughs> I like, have to like, say, like Lethereal to me is like the most Matt Newman card I've ever designed. <laughs> Like it was great. Like as I'm designing her, I'm like, Matt's gonna love this card. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and I didn't even have much of a hand in in designing her. No, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I showed her to you the way that like, she is now. Done. Do it. <laughs> Printed. That was kind of cool because there was Matt. Look what I made. <laughs> I mean, I get I get that first line there where when Amor is in play, like I understand the lore behind that. But th was that a was that a general first revision line or did that come in later like i mean right. it's neat it's a neat thing um, so like matt said we definitely wanted to get diversity in the set wanted mm -hmm. another female hero in the game i wanted it to be someone from the lore because it seems like every time we make up a hero right it's it's a woman because there's not that many so i was so excited that the name of ethereal came up and i was like oh my gosh i forgot about her that's great we'll make her into a hero um one of the one of the things we were trying to accomplish with the set was to promote some more Rohan. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, cards like the Muster of Rohan was really there to like elevate that deck to a top tier status. 
Um, so you would think we would make a Rohan hero to go in that pack, right? But yeah. we like did, we weren't doing any Rohan heroes. We, 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 we've done like every Rohan we, we've character done that's ever, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was, we kind of, it was kind of a cheat. It was like I got to have my cake and eat it too because yeah. I got to make this Gondor noble character because we're also trying to build up Gondor in the set. But she was perfect because it was like, oh, I know. She could gain the role yeah, tree because she, she literally, yeah, exactly, there. yeah. Like, I think there was a discussion at one point, like, should she just have Gondor Rohan? And we we decided to uh, shy away from that because our in our current timeline, she's not actually married yet. Correct. They get married later, so it made sense for her to sort of gain Rohan when Amber is around mm -hmm. as sort of a tease, you know, yep. as to like what is going to happen in the future. Yeah, she really, she's really like one of the most pivotal or, or critical heroes in the cycle. The idea that you have something that can put some a card that can put people into play. Like anytime you can get that action, that card advantage of putting people into play, the play just works out so nicely. And then if it, you know, it goes back, it, it goes back into your deck, and, you know, then Amarin bring it out and then, you know, and then Amor gets yeah. it. And the good thing about this also is that Amor can be in play anywhere. Amor does not have to be in play on your in your on your side and is that was that an intentional design or i mean i i don't, I don't think it was ever really a question i think uh, whenever there's that sort of effect i think it's always cooler if it can go across the board and someone else can bring their tech their heavy tactics yeah. rohan deck and i bring my my gondor deck and we're working together well since we're talking about how matt and i work as a couple on this game i will say that that was something like legit i would honestly overlook sometimes i would write so many cards. So many times, I would write a card thinking only about solo players mm. because I tend to play the game. At, at my first introduction to the game was mostly solo. Uh, so sometimes I would write a card, not not trying to be exclusive, sure, sure. but more just absent-mindedly. So it'd be like, if you control right. Aomer, she gains the Rohan trade. And so a lot of our earlier actions was Matt going. Well, could it just be a piece in play? <laughs> like, do you have to control it? Can we make it more multiplayer focused? And like, well, that's right. It's co-op. Yeah. <laughs> From what I heard, that something like that happened with you designing Marvel Champions, right? It was supposed to only be like a one and two player game, and then all of a sudden, the the car, the art on the box said one to four, and you're like, wait, what, what, what? Like early on, wasn't that one of those stories that was going on? <laughs> there, was, there was a last minute decision kind of made there. I don't think Matt was part of that, though. No, no, no. I think <laughs> if Matt had been part of right. it. Right. Now, Matt, it's a little off topic, but do you prefer co-op, large co-op games like this? Or like, or are you the champion of four-player co-op games? I mean, I, I always tend to enjoy playing with a, a group because I think the more interaction you have across the table, the more fun the experience is. Um, but I also play solo my fair share uh, of yeah. games. I play a lot of games solo at home. So, yeah, um, I, I don't think I have a like solid preference. I think if I can get four people together, I like to play four players. I like three player. Three player is good. It's a nice, three. nice middle yeah. ground between two and four. Four just gets a little <laughs> long for me sometimes. Sure. Three yeah. and four. I've seen so many places where everybody's like, "Well, this game is obviously you know maximized for two player, you know, and that's how you want to play the game." But I never get the sense. I ninety five percent of the time play the game solo, and I love it. I mean, is there an optimal player count for Lord of the Rings? Not on purpose. I, don't think so. I think that's yeah. subjective. I really, I truly yeah. believe that's subjective. I think it depends. Like one thing that strikes me as a gamer and a game designer is how often people emphasize uh, you can play a whole game in just 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like that's like a big selling point. Only 20 to 30 <laughs> minutes, you know, like as if somehow shorter always equals better. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like a Twilight Imperium fan. You know, like, I, yeah. I will play a game for eight hours if it keeps me if engaged. It's good, yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I think it's all subjective. It just depends what kind of experience you're going for. And so for me, subjectively, I like three player because so often, you know, there's not a lot of great three player games. Everything's two to four, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Two or four. Um, so it's so nice when you have an odd number of people to play a game that just flows so seamlessly. Um, I think people that say it's optimized for two, a lot of them just probably prefer the the feel of that not necessarily that the game itself is really any better or worse at two yeah i also think it depends on the scenario too some mm -hmm. scenarios are more kind of geared for multiplayer some scenarios are more geared for solo and that's yeah. not necessarily by intent but sometimes it just kind of 
the numbers flow out that way. That's true. Sometimes, um, sometimes <laughs> when when you're playing something at one, two, or even three player, it plays completely different. The Con of the Rings, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm playing them four player. I never play four player, and you know, even epic multiplayer, like that's wild to me to even think about trying to get you know enough people in the room to play yeah. eight play. Anyways, but you know, like I just feel like it's a it's a different <laughs> game not any better or worse it's just a different game and i think as designers you have to consider that well you know what it's okay that that uh that escape from dolgador yeah. works yeah. better two player like that it's just a two player game like or it's better two player so back to the back to the the couple here so lothurial and amr so you know you guys are deck designers you love the game you sit and you play the game all the time or at least yeah. as often as you can and, and you're fans of the game so what does a Lothurial oh, we do it for, yeah, right? Just play games. gamer <laughs> deck look like for, for people playing this? I think you want to put in a lot of questing allies, uh, like good qu allies that you want to jump into hand, or jump into play from your hand, uh, and then some of them with discard effects so that you can mm -hmm. trigger uh, Aomer. Uh, like I think Escort from Adorus is a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. um, I also think like uh, Guthwine, uh, yep. Aomer's sword. Is a no-brainer if you've mm. got leadership and you can throw that yeah. in there. Um, Aomund. Aomund, yeah. Aomund's yeah. a really fun because he <laughs> all your Rohan guys right. ready. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you put him in, he crafts. So that's the uh, face, what, two, two willpower right. and ready all your Rohan yeah. characters yeah. for free. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Um, i for sure. Yeah, the deck, the deck that I fun. built was you know, using a lot of the cards and some of them are announced and some are not, you know, sure. from the cycle. But it was it was very much about that versatility of do I want to fire off this discard effect? You know, since they're going away anyway, they can either go back in my deck or they can go to my discard pile, right. depending on uh, what effect that I if if I want to trigger it. So if there's you can even jump in yeah. like the what's it what the um the tactics guy who uh, discards to engage an enemy. West Westfold Outrider. Oh yeah, Westfold yeah. Outrider. You could you could throw him into play questing for zero, mm -hmm. and then just discard him to engage an enemy and take yeah. a threat out of the staging area. But he might be he might even be boosted up by some other willpower bonuses. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's just it introduces a lot of versatility, and and uh, I know a lot of people are concerned that it would be like, wow, that's so strong, but the fact that you are losing a card from your hand every yeah. every round that you do it, so it actually balanced out pretty well. You're putting these people to play. Like, if if you're not having fun, you're not playing the game, right? That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so we talked about Imrahil yeah. as the as the kind of the third hero. But is there a, a third hero other than Imrahil that goes with? That? I mean, a Theodrid, Theodrid gives everybody a resource, but you're not necessarily looking for resource. But Rohan in general, <laughs> you could do you could you could do uh, blue Theoden. I might look get for. The yeah, Theoden actually I think yeah. is a really good choice because you have your quester and you have your attacker. Uh, you might want to get a defender down. Sure. Yeah. And uh, Theoden's great because you have his, his snow main so he can quest and and then uh, ready so he's always ready uh, you know, to defend or something. Yeah, I also like um, bring it full circle and yeah. the messenger of the king gambling. Right. Right? <laughs> Just like always have gambling in play. That's <laughs> sure, because then if you trigger your discard abilities, right. then, you just, then you're just mitigating the yeah. losing a card from your hand because it's coming up. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Caleb, you just said you don't play a a tri sphere deck. Was that tongue in cheek, or are you being serious? Not not too much. I'm serious. I think you're gonna find uh, the resource match very very difficult. I play a I lot think of the, the tri sphere. The tri sphere deck that I see you play sometimes is the the side quest one, where you yes. start with the <laughs> you start with the neutral side quest, so that you don't have to worry about resource matches. Yep. Yeah, that's true. I yeah. did play a lot of that. <laughs> Just start throwing near, grab. Uh, I forget what it's called. The gathering, gathering storm. storm. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then I don't need a resource match. Right. right. I just without, without any kind of plan in place. I, I just that's... I don't like struggling to pay for my cards. Sure with that when you and I played a month ago that was, the general consensus among the community was that like uh, that Rohan Rohan struggles a little bit and so this card helps the Rohan mechanic but does this get it over that perception that Rohan is struggling is that is that was that one of the design characteristics as you're talking behind the scenes like hey the community saying Rohan struggles does this help Rohan I don't know if Lothuriel fixes it by herself not by herself but the but cards I, in I the set by the end of it, yeah. Rohan is is up there for sure. Yeah. yeah. 
I can just imagine what what you guys do. Like, let's see. How are we going to make Aemond worth oh, for sure. <laughs> worth yeah, his thing? Definitely. So let's let's design a hero that that brings people in and out of play. You know, like <laughs> like it just seems like this cycle is filled with just making old cards really good. I don't, there, I don't know that it was ever a time I didn't think Aemond. Yeah, was I think Aemond is always good. But there's definitely other Rohan cards. That yeah, could use the boost. Yeah, a little perspective. Like when I when I first started working here, and the game was still very young. Like yeah. Dwarf Delf was just coming out, uh, and I was like working on, I was working on against the Shadow. Yeah. At the time, like the Rohan deck is what I used to play most of the scenarios in development because it was the, the best I could get to consistently quest, and with enough allies out, I could muster that attack power as well. Mm -hmm. Aomond was key to that. It was always like that big turn. You're gonna, you're gonna you can, defend with Aomond, let him die, so everyone else play. readies up. Yeah, and then you crush your enemies and uh, <laughs> win the game. So we, you didn't use a dwarf swarm to do that then? <laughs> no, I mean dwarfs. We knew we knew the dwarf uh, deck was good. We already knew that was good. Um, <laughs> But it was, uh, I think it was astonishing speed <laughs> yeah. that I really liked playing. I don't know. I always like having to work just a little harder than, you know, the, the popular uh, strategy is just a little boring for me. <laughs> um, so, so what else is going in? So we talked about the allies that are going in this deck. So what kind of, you know, I mean, there's obviously some some cards that, that make a lot of sense just in any deck. So, you know, like readying and the unexpected courage and steward of Gondor to get resources and things like that. But what, what there's no steward you, in this deck. I mean, you can, not my build. You can put in leadership and not do it. Ha hashtag not my build. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, probably, I'm probably going Thaden. Oh, that, you know why I'm going Thaden? Is he's already resource acceleration yeah, yeah. in the form of reduced so you, cost. You, you're doing the Thaden and I'm doing tactics. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm, doing the, <laughs> I'm doing the spirit, you know, tactics with Thaden, Lithereal, Aomer. Right. And just getting down a lot of, a lot of cheap Rohan. Eyes. Get some horses in there. Yeah, get, yeah. Get the mounts. Yeah, and you're getting you're getting action advantage on Aomer, so he's killing right. at least two enemies every turn. Oh yeah, but you put Firefoot on him. Because mm -hmm. if you have Firefoot, his boost and Guthwine, he is attacking for. Does Firefoot give an attack boost too? Firefoot gives. Yeah. Uh, was like plus plus two. Two. He's attacking for like nine with like trample damage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. You can't, you can't go wrong. And then he's returning an uh, Rohan ally from your discard pile to your hand so that you can keep the keep the loop going forever. Oh, and I actually took a little bit of flack because I was like, this card is pretty good in the right build because you're questing for four for for a cost of one every round, you know, with with, with gambling and, and bringing gambling back. and Or not bringing it, but using gambling. Yeah, I just, I think I may have overstated how good I thought it was. I was like, man, this thing is awesome. Look at the, what I can do with it. You know, like, this is amazing. I've since dialed it back a little bit with my excitement, but. I think it is awesome. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think it's like auto include in every spirit, card, but in a, in a Rohan build, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. So mm -hmm. do you ever play, we had suggested that you play this in yep. two different decks. We put Lithuanian yeah. in one with kind of the Gondor. I don't know. Are you playing Gondor Swarm at that point, I guess, with her in the Lothiriel deck, and then are you playing? Did did that ever come up with you guys specifically, or? Well, I think one of the cool things about Lothiriel is uh, she's not strictly Rohan. She is whatever traits she has mm -hmm. uh, is the allies that she can put into play, which is the same uh, the same way that Tactics Emrahil was worded. That way, you could run Tactics right. Emrahil oh, as like an Outlands right. card or a Gondor card, or mm -hmm. even just like warriors. Like actually, I liked doing Tactics Emrahils with like elves, yeah. like Sylvans, oh. jumping Sylvans into play because that they yeah, you would do the one that's like yeah. minus two defense to an enemy. Right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That was cool. So there's a lot of cool strategies that you can do, and you could do like the Ethereal Emrahil, make them like elf friends or yeah. something, and then like do an Elven deck or play. I know that you have a group of play testers. That, that play that are pretty dedicated to doing this. We met them at Con of the Rings, some of them at Con of the Rings and things like that. And they're, you know, but I'm, I'm also curious kind of how often you get the, get the cards on the table and just be able to, to really play test these to make sure that, that, the, that it's good. Now, the short answer is not as often as we would like. Yeah, I mean, the, with this cycle, I think, because I, I mean, you feel free to chime in, but I think mm -hmm. the goal for this cycle, player card wise, was to really like, blow up the number of decks that can be built exponentially and yeah. create a huge diversity of decks that oh, people wow, can right, make so right. that they can keep playing this game for, mm -hmm. for many, many years. 
Um, so uh, it's kind of hard to play test all of the possibilities. Oh, there was no way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was no um, way. Especially with, with contracts, uh, Messenger the King kind of <laughs> adding so many new hero options for the game. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. So really, uh, when we were developing the cycle once a week, that was that was as much as I could reliably play. That would be my Thursday night play test group. That was, I don't know that I had time to do more than that, uh, but I did have a lot of active online testers. Uh, so I made a card like, well, pretty much every contract. Yeah. Every contract every was contract like a challenge. Was, yeah. Like, here, break this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make your most ridiculous Destroy deck. This, tell, yeah. me, tell me how you broke the game with this. Well, I did Messenger of the King Faramir, and I ready to meet. Tom. That's right. Yeah, that's where that rule came from. That was the Messenger of the King. Like, they can't ready more than once per phase. Because right. That was the first deck. I think Jeremy. It's always yeah, I think we all knew. <laughs> we all knew that that was going to happen. He's just like, yeah, so I just gave him, like, three unexpected courage, and you can write a bunch of so this is one way that I think Matt and I are a little bit different as designers in our in our approach. Like I'm a much more cautious designer, and so working with Matt has been good because it, it teaches me to swing for the fences a little more, mm -hmm. which definitely came through in this set. Yeah, uh, yeah for sure. But so I I, <laughs> I I tend to like edit my designs down before releasing them, mm -hmm. and then testers <laughs> might be like, "Well, it's okay. I wish it was punchier," and then maybe I'll punch it up. Where I think a lot of times Matt's just like, "Here's something yeah. crazy, guys." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think we can see that in the in the design of the encounter deck. Uh, the, Matt, if you're responsible for the for the encounter decks that you say you are, then you're punching the players in the teeth all the time. <laughs> Caleb's like, well, you know, we'll just give you a sense of a sense of accomplishment, and then you'll just thread <laughs> out eventually, you know, like, <laughs> and then you'll lose. <laughs> I have that. Kind of yeah, I don't that like. No, I, I haven't either. <laughs> like, I still remember, Black I still remember <laughs> playing Raid right on the River Carnage, being like, you know what? I'm done. Yeah, I would, maybe I, I raised your point. Point. I've actually been playing through the Ringmaker cycle, and I was playing the three trials solo, and it was. One of those ones that is uh, easier if you have more people, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Well, I I know you guys are at work, so um I'll I'll let you have the the final the final say here before we uh before we wrap up the show, but is there what else do you have to say about this couple or about AMR specifically or Lothereal specifically or design notes about these two cards? I just think it's fun. I think one of the cool things about this game is that you can create cards that work so well together. Um, and it's not just Aomer and Lothariel, obviously, mm -hmm. it's like Aragorn and Arwen. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of, at Legolas and Gimli, right? There's a lot of cards where they, because they have such a close relationship in the story, we can yeah. have them mirror that relationship in mm -hmm. the cards. And that's yeah. just so cool. Like, that's one of the best things about this game is that the cards can tell a story. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I feel like players always responded well to that. For sure. I think the first time I did something like that deliberately was like, Caliborn and Galadriel. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Caliborn and Galadriel for sure. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I like that with Arwen. It's like, yeah, you can add a resource to any Noldor hero. Or Aragorn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had an episode where I had a um, a podcast that talks about the the Legendarium. So they talk about, you know, they went back to the Cimmerillion, which obviously Fantasy Flight doesn't have the rights to. So you can't, you know, it's it gets ticky tacky talking about some of that stuff um, from a design point of view. But you know, I put some of the cards up, and I was like. Okay, guys, if you had one hero that was going to... I explained the game with them. They had no idea about the game. So I said, if you had one hero that was going to have the most threat versus Sauron, who would it be? And they were like, oh, it would be Gandalf or Elrond. Or, you know, like, and, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, there it was. You know, like, and so I've always said this to you guys. You guys really do, like, consider the the intellectual yeah. property that is Tolkien. You're not just trying to rush out something to put money in the, in the hands of, of Christian Peterson. You're, you're trying to really take care of the product. And I think that this comes through in designs like Aomer and Lithuriel, where you care about the, the, what Tolkien did and that comes through. So. Thank you. Well, and, and to be fair, Christian Peterson is also a huge fan yeah. of the lore. Yeah, for sure. And he had uh, <laughs> He definitely had opinions too about uh, what some cards should do based on his his knowledge. Uh, my favorite example is Feely and Keeley, another couple. Yeah, we didn't we didn't go. get to yeah. Feely and Keeley. Oh, well. That's not quite a whole conversation. No. <laughs> but, 
He he, he, actually, he he like straight up designed those cards. Yeah. He was just like, you know, when you play one, they should fetch the other because they're always together. And that's what they do. They're like, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's your, uh, notes gift. Yeah, no, this this game this game's just been a just kind of labor of love, I think, for everyone involved. Like everyone who's worked on it's just a big fan of the lore and the IP. So it's always been pretty natural and easy to to make cards feel like the story. Yeah. At least uh, that's the my experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's why it's so successful is because you can tell that it's made with um the passion for the um historic text. Yeah. Um, of all of Tolkien's work, even if you don't have rights to it, you can see that it's even drawing inspiration from the entire, the entirety of Tolkien. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we did kind of miss an opportunity with Shalab, though. She probably should have like transformed into a woman or something. <laughs> where's where's Gwaihir's little crown? Huh? Where's Gwaihir's little crown? It's invisible. Oh, it's <laughs> Why well, here's my evil crown attachment? Matt's, Matt's still mad at me because I never made a Gavin ally. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I'm a Gavin ally. Gavin is Landwind's Falcon. Yeah. That was his favorite power couple from yes, the Yes, that's my favorite power couple. Landwind and Gavin. <laughs> From the books. <laughs> I was wondering if you guessed it. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Another fun little tidbit for you guys, but like those uh, those little fictions that we write about our made up characters. That was actually Matt's idea that we should do that. Was it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like surprised. Like, I don't. Remember. It was a while ago. Well, because yeah. we had a couple. I mean, there's they're they're right there in the core right, set, yeah. and they're in like the second. They're, they're we had the few there. that were like Middle Earth quest characters. Yeah, but they didn't right. have any backstories. Solid. They're just like who's who's yeah. Alan? Who's oh, it's this a dwarf. Guy? <laughs> um, and I remember once we started writing the fiction for the cycles. Yeah, I think it was uh, Adrian and the Marthiel were the first. Yeah, because you were right? like, yeah. we should write something else so that we know who they are. Yeah. And, and I'm a, I'm such a uh, like a cynic sometimes <laughs> that I'm like. I'm the guy who never reads that. I don't right. care. Like when I play Twilight Imperium, you can read the back of all yeah. the I don't know. I don't care. They look cool and they have yeah. an ability. It says necrovirus. <laughs> Why would I want to but, know more? But Matt was like, yeah, we could just write a story. And I'm like, I'm against it. You know, yeah, yeah. I think Christian thought it was a good idea. So we did. And suddenly people are like, yeah, this person's cool. This yeah, is yeah. like Galadriel's handmaiden. Yeah, yeah. They're like, this person has a bird. His name is Gavin. <laughs> I, I, I'll never forget the day that I was at Gen Con and someone called uh, Rosiel Minith, which oh, is her yeah. real name, in her backstory. And I was like, oh, you told me that story. Yeah. So I, was, I was like, they read the story. They read the story. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of. I did have fun once I started doing it too. Yeah, like yeah. I wrote the Thurindir story. Was like the most fun I ever had. Thurindir story is great. Right I love Khalil's story. backstory was great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Real quick, we did we did have an episode just recently talking about Khalil, and I thought that that may have been like your your subterfuge way of calling out to Kalel Superman's name from Krypton. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not a Superman. <laughs> oh well, I mean, obviously, there's insp. I mean, it's it's funny to see the the low hanging inspiration that you have. Like one of the quests in the box is the Temple of Doom. I think you Matt's called reaction, it the Temple of Doom. Matt, Matt's reaction is like, you're not seriously calling. <laughs> yeah, you're not yeah, really gonna call it Temple. Of Doom. Like that's not gonna. That's, that's just a placeholder name. That's not gonna get approved. That's is just it? a joke. I'm like, it's gonna stay that way gonna... until someone tells me it has to change. No change it. No change it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was gonna I'm be like, the other on, one that I bring up. Doom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The temple of no, Doom. No, just fits. <laughs> My my favorite is Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah, yeah. In the first quest of the Forgotten Age, stage one is Welcome to the Jungle. That's so great. You got it. That was so awesome. Yeah. Nate's such a GNR fan that we had to throw that in there for him. We we put a lot of references to stuff in there. They're digging in the wrong spot. They're digging in the wrong spot. Um, in a, in the Arkham Pack Dark Side of the Moon, there's a bunch of Pink Floyd lyrics <laughs> in like the for agendas That's and stuff. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we just really have a good time playing the product that you make. Um, whether it's Marvel Champions now, Arkham Horror, you know, or Lord of the Rings, or any of the other things that you guys have had your right. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> right? You guys do a great job. At the at the very end, we've been taking these couples, and you guys can choose to do this or choose not to. That's fine. For these couples, we're doing like thumbs up, thumbs down if it like works well together. I I already know what I'm gonna say because I think it was obviously designed with all of these in mind. So I'm gonna give a thumbs up on this couple. And that I think it plays really nicely together. I saw um, Duren's father play um, Lethereal Dex, and it just did what it was supposed to do really, really nicely. So, um, and Grant, what do you what do you think about this couple? <laughs> I'm also giving it a thumbs up. It's heavy in the law. Um, it works well. I haven't had a chance to play the Ethereal yet because I haven't gotten the packs yet. So hopefully, when they arrive, I will. Um, but from <laughs> um, for the um, entirety of the law, I'm giving it a thumbs up. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a Wayne's World two thumbs up. Zang! Yeah. <laughs> 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 my favorite heroes in the cycle for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, and no card talk episode would be complete with Caleb on the show if I didn't mention how, how how much I can't wait to see Spirit Aragorn spoiled in the last episode the last pack <laughs> and obviously you guys can't say anything about it so I'm putting you on the spot and anyway and th th there's a lot of there's a lot of options that could go out there but I always mention Spirit Aragorn as being the, as being a one that I would love to see to wrap this up but uh, anyways uh, guys I, 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 we're pushing time here and I know that you guys have work to do so um, I really appreciate you guys coming on the show uh, Matt for your first time and Caleb for your seventh or eighth time, whatever it is, you you know, you're you guys are just totally awesome. Well, we look forward to receiving that check. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> you can make that table too. <laughs> Thank you so much. And tune in again as we talk about more cards from the game. Have a great day. And if you're interested in finding this or any of our back episodes of Card Talk, feel free to search YouTube where you can find our flagship video episodes with the username Card Talk 2018. Or you can search the RSS feed, cardtalk2018.libsyn.org, for our extended audio versions of our podcast. Or you can find us on Facebook at Card Talk 2018. And if you have any questions for Grant or myself or for both of us, feel free to email us at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.